Hello, friends. How are y'all doing today? On this fine Friday, final day before the weekend. God, I'm so ready for the weekend. Can't wait for the weekend to hit. I think over this morning, I was like, man, this weekend, it's gonna be a real one. Um, la la la, da da da. Oh, I'm feeling good about myself right now. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Dingsy? How are you doing, buddy? Hello, hello, hello. Granite Duck. Rivens. What's up, buddy? Can we have new maps, but old Harstam? <laughs> old Harstam is no more. Can't come to the phone right now. Oh my god. Oh, oh, oh. To deal with the freaking YouTube garbage is, is really something. I'm not even sure why I try it, to be honest. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, what's up, TK Kim? TK Kim, TK, TK. How are we all doing this? Uh... Oh, it is what it is. What's going on? I'm uh. I'm trying my best to edit something in my YouTube stream, but it is not working. Sometimes the entire YouTube platform, it just stops working altogether, but just on Chrome. And then I need to go to Firefox. I figured this out because one day I couldn't upload videos on Chrome. Like some options just, just wouldn't show. And I was ready to start flaming Team, U team YouTube in the on Twitter. And then I saw some guy who actually, um, who was also flaming them. And then send another tweet under it that said, actually, it works on Firefox. And then that really helped me. Because then ever since then, whenever something doesn't work on Chrome, I try it on Firefox. And it literally always works. Like literally every single time. It's, it's really quite crazy. It's beautiful. It's the best thing you could have hoped for. So let's see if that's the case here as well. Why do you have your graphics set so low? Oh, when I play Protoss, I uh, I don't want to have too many things happening. You know what I mean? I, I like it when it's simple for me. God, Firefox is a piece of work, isn't it? Is it always this slow? Holy crap. Why would people use browsers that aren't Chrome? Or aren't Chromium based? Make that make sense. It, you can't. What the hell? That's because it's trying to translate everything. That's why. God, this platform is idiotic. Why did you decide the main protos? I told this story many times already, but I'll tell you another time. It's because I played Warcraft 3, and in Warcraft 3, I played objectively the worst race. Like this is not, this is not something that could be. Uh, what do you call it? That you could uh, argue about, you know? You really couldn't. Oh, this just doesn't work altogether. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, you just couldn't argue about it. It's just it's simply true. I played the weakest race back when I played. Undead was the weakest race. Um, it's like, and it wasn't true. close either. You know, like uh, Undead sucked specifically against Orc. Uh, and I was like, never again. So then what I decided to do was to ask what the best race was. And this guy told me that played Brood War. He was really bad. He was probably like equivalent of being like gold in Brood War. And he told me that Protoss is the best. He's like, you know, Protoss, really easy. I said, really? He's like, yeah. Fat units, lots of HP. A little bit like Orc, which was broken in Warcraft 3 when I played. 
Yeah, he was right. Yeah, not for the first four years though. He was right at certain points in the in the timeline. How are the games going? Uh, so far, I haven't played anything yet. Played some games this morning with uh, Shadow. Actually, had a good time with that as well. Ah, PvP is so much fun, man. <clears throat> it's it turned from one of my least favorite matchups into one of my more favorite matchups. Not my most favorite matchup, but there's so much strategy and there's so much. I don't actually know what the correct thing to do is right now. I don't think anyone really does. Um, but it's fun to play. I really enjoy playing it. PvZ is fun. It's relatively easy. PvT is much, much better than it was before. Um, against the top guys, it still feels hard. But against the lower level players, it feels much easier as well. <clears throat> also the Tower Rush. Also true. Yeah, one of the first games I played with Protoss, I played a Tower Rush. And I won against a much higher level player. Than I was. He'd been playing for like a month or two months, and I tower, I cannon rushed him. It was the first ever game I played in StarCraft, and I won. And I never beat this guy in Warcraft 3. I was like, all right, I like this race. I can't believe you know the lore better than I do. It's messed up. What do you think of Hero's performance during the GSL? I get annoyed when people put max packs over him. Hero is honestly the goat of Protoss. No, he's not. <laughs> you know what goat means, right? It means the greatest of all time. He's not the greatest of all time of Protoss. Like, at least not when it comes to results. Maybe when it comes to longevity of career. He's been around for long, but... SOS has better performance. I think Rain was considered more dominant. And I think right at this moment... Max Pack is rank 3 on a League of Luck and Hero is rank 4, so... Mm. Make it out what you will. Hero was the greatest of 2021 to 2022. Is that so? I don't think that's true, no. It took him a while to get back into his swing. His military service was done in 2021. Mid, like in, uh, in May. I don't think he was actually better... And then he won GSL in 2022, GSL season two, but he performed awful in uh, in 2021. And even at the beginning of 2022, it wasn't very hot. Then he also won DreamHack Atlanta though at the end of 22. That was cool. Who did he play in the final? Did Hero fight Bunny in the final there? That DreamHack Atlanta. Yeah, it was Bunny. Bunny beat Serral? Or Hero beat Serral? Yeah, Bunny beat Serral. It's quite the switcheroo that people hadn't expected, wasn't it? Maddening. Uh, wait, someone just said something. Did you check the patch changes before it was fully implemented? I'm pretty sure one of the things was take away some of the buffs to the Cyclones. Yeah, the buffs to the the damage, the, the upgrade scaling of the Cyclone was taken away and the rapid fire of the feedback was taken away. Fair changes, if you ask me. Not super interesting, I think. All right, let's play a game. Ooh. Game with Zerg first, maybe. Nani was the clear Protoss goat. I think there was a time where Naniwa was definitely the best Protoss player in the world, yeah. Not sure if I'd call him the GOAT. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't call him the GOAT. I think SOS is just the, the greatest Protoss, the best performing Protoss of all time, right? It's just a, a fact. Stupid question. Will there be a StarCraft 3? First of all, there is no such thing as stupid question. Just dumb people. But that wasn't even a dumb question. Not sure if you're a dumb person. Can't judge that from here. Uh, most likely no. If there's going to be a StarCraft 3, there's it's probably going to be a freemium game. It's going to be a, an RPG. That you can play on your phone. If you pay enough. 
I guess you can buy the minerals and the Vespine gas then. For the small fee of $5,000. If you pay enough minerals and gas, you can play strip poker with Jim Rayner and Sarah Kerrigan. I bet this would... I feel like if that was like a mini game, this would probably get more money than the entirety of StarCraft 2 made. <laughs> but you're playing with real money, and when you win, you win in-game currency. There's really no point. SC2 is already paid to win with map hacks. Yeah, lots of people with map hacks winning tournaments. Can you name a couple of the people that won tournaments with map hacks again? Because I keep forgetting. Ah, right. Because they don't exist. That's the beauty of the StarCraft 2 hacks, is that they're so freaking obvious. So they're completely pointless in an offline environment, which is where most of the money is going to be made. So... <coughs> yeah. Clem with his scans. That is pretty close to Mavic, I'm not going to lie. That's pretty. That's as close to Mavic as you're gonna get. Okay, legit. As the kids would say, no cap. But you can't tell me that the sensor tower is some brilliant design. Okay, if you just think about the sensor tower, this has to be the dumbest building in the entire game. I don't understand why this. I feel like like there's a couple of things that really annoy me. And one of them definitely is the sensor tower. If we could remove the sensor tower from the game, that would be a great move, in my opinion. Like, there's, there's... It's legit map hacks. And it doesn't grab invisible units. That's the only thing it's not good against. I remember the sensor tower being considered super bad noob crap. It is so good in the late game. I think it is it is it is it is really too good. I think the sensor tower is too good. I think um, the revelation ability from the oracle is also too powerful. Um, and then scan. I think these are like the, the 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 three scouting tools that exist that feel just extremely powerful. That in my mind, you know, if I think about it. I'm like, should should this be in the game? Probably not, but for balance sake, you know, you keep them in because you start messing with that stuff. That has probably some pretty big implications. Probably, I have no clue. Never. I feel like that would be... You know, if I had a magic wand, that's that's what I would be wanding out of this world, you know? I'd be taking it out real fast. Freaking sensor towers. It's actually unbelievable. It's that, that's, the, that's the biggest one. That one upsets me. I don't. I don't think it's imbalanced or anything. Oh, uh, like in the, it. You know what I mean? I just think it's stupid. I just think it's a very good argument for taking stuff out, but other people don't seem to agree. So they're like, oh, I don't have the current balance. You know, it's like, oh, piss off! Oh, he just recall. Loser. What the hell is he doing? That's fast, isn't it? Oh God. Feels like I'm lacking some stuff. Oh my god, I just unsupply block myself. I love when I accidentally do that, because that absolutely was not on purpose. I also freaking love my overlord spread this game. Holy cow. Playing like a gangster here, huh? Oh, guess who's not playing like a gangster? Or maybe he is playing like a gangster. Gangsters tend to have a pretty short lifespan. Oh, look at this gangster oracle go. Getting caught for his crimes or getting shot by a rival gang. Absolute gangster oracle. Oi, 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 oi. Rookie moves over here. I wonder if anyone ever did a study on, like, the average gangster lifespan and how much money they actually make and how much time they invest. Gangsters always say that they're hustling. I feel like it's a very bad career choice, both for lifespan as well as financially. Like, how many people in a gang are actually making serious money? It's like you have the top dog, 
it's probably the it's the one with the most responsibility, but at the same time, it's like it's a pretty dangerous job, you know. Like you either end up in prison or dead. Just would have gotten an engineering degree. I'm pretty sure you would have gotten more money. Yeah, if you pay a bit of tax, but no chance of you getting shot, is there? There's very little gangsters that became extremely wealthy and got to live into their, not even in their 50s or their 40s. And even then, the life that they have, despite having a lot of cash, it's scary, isn't it? You have to be like a semi-psychopath to enjoy that. Maybe not even just a semi-psychopath, maybe just a legit psychopath. Oh, he brought the oracles back home as well, that's cool. That's actually pretty tight. I'm gonna kill every single thing that this guy, or every single probe that this guy's ever built in his miserable life. This is a really, really good trade for me. And also, I feel like a lot of them lose their 20s, you know, which is often considered as a good period in life. They lose it sitting in prison or hiding from the feds, just getting shot, being in the hospital. Your entire life schedules is being turned upside down. You have to work at night. Like usually there's premiums for that type of work, you know, working at night. <coughs> I feel like I can just go across the map with this, can't I? It's my favorite thing to do anyway. He went pretty hard here, didn't he? Quite a few dudes out. I just lost a bunch of units for no real reason. Let's see if I can morph these into these dudes. Definitely can. Oh, I messed something up. I still need to change my hotkeys. I've been saying this for probably over a week now. Actually, more than a week. Oh, it would have been epic if I would have gotten that in, but I didn't. Would have been super epic. I love when things are super epic. It's much better than just being a regular epic, if you ask me. Ooh, you think I can fight this? See, he doesn't have a lot of crap, does he? Oh, uh, you're in trouble. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. Shame on me now. I did, did the places you've never been. Now look me down. Huh? I, I, trouble, trouble, trouble. I, I, trouble. Oh, nice one. I wonder if I should probably, probably should have a couple of these over here. There's uh, more of them stasis wars, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Hmm. I think that was well as I was hoping it was. I think I can still fight these, though. Problem is I don't have any upgrades on these dudes, huh? That's actually a, a serious issue that I'm uh, I'm working with right now. Yeah, we're still pretty much maxed out. I think this guy is pretty high MMR, by the way. Honestly, he's like 5-5 five, five or so, so we're going to take a, a good chunk of points from him. Because this matchup is so easy. Are these Zerks complaining about this matchup? Meanwhile, when I play it, I look unbeatable. Ooh. This is a cool move. I always like it when people start morphing a dude right in front of my face. GG. Beautiful stuff. Super chat. A thousand INRs. What are INRs? It's a good name for a currency. What the hell is an INR? I have to Google that. Indian rupee? Is that it? 
Oh my god, I'm a genius. A thousand INRs. Two euros. Eleven euros. Thank you very much for the eleven euros and twelve cents. A thousand Indian rupees. This is why they call the, me Mr. Worldwide. Is because I know all the currencies. That's pretty crazy, no? God. The CEO of a gang makes money. Is that really true? Bottom 1% makes like minimum wage. Top 1% makes serious money, but are in fear of their lives constantly. I want some actual statistics though. How much money does the average gangster make? Rookie gangsters <laughs> make $2,500 to $4,000 a month. Mobster salary. The average mobster in the US makes 40K. Mobsters make the most in San Jose, California at 79,000. <laughs> How did they calculate this? Is this like self reported or no? <laughs> How much tax will you have to pay as a mobster? <laughs> 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 For an individual filer in this tax bracket, you would have an estimated average federal tax in 2019 of 22%. Mobster could expect to have a take-home pay of 40k minus tax reductions. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking mobsters, man. 40k minus tax reduction, that's not bad. That's money right there. You can even see... If you're a smart mobster, right... You can go to this type of website. This one's called Comparably. Comparably. You can even see by location what is best. Right now, if you're a mobster in Tampa, Florida, God, you're down bad, let me tell you. You're down real bad. Long Beach or, you know, in the upper trend, Boston. It's a great place to be a mobster currently. Nashville, now that the music industry is moving out. And Austin, Texas. Love to see it. Very interesting indeed. What are the salary ranges for a mobster? Yeah, I think this is all just self-reported. There's 10 guys that make between 1 and 19k. I hate to see it. Federal tax went down though for the mobsters from 22 to 12. It's pretty interesting. Biden gets in power and we get tax cut tax cuts on the mobsters. That's a pretty good argument that I never hear Trump make in any of his speeches. I mean, this is as clear as day. He could say it real good as well. <laughs> Go to comparably.com. You can see when Trump was in power 2019, 22% on the mobsters. We were taking their cash. Biden gets in power and a boom, instant tax cut of 10%. For the mobsters? Who does that? It's kind of messed up. All crooks. Unbelievable. <clears throat> it's absolutely unbelievable, these guys. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. Software engineer, you get the good money. Thank you, Yo-Yo to -Yo Rocks, for another thousand Indian rupees. Very kind of you, buddy. Love to see it. Not watching the new Star Wars? What is that? Oh, Star's War is going on. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's the Korean qualifier. What the hell? I wasn't aware of this. No, of course we're going to watch this. Oh, are you stupid? This is this is what I live for. Oh, well, that's good matches. Thanks, Zane. All right, boys. Change of plan. Change of plan. We're going to be watching the Korean. This is the, this is the close qualifier for Star's War. Why did no one tell me this? I can't edit my, my titles, though. This is highly frustrating. Let me see if I can do it from here. Um, what should I call it? Um, new patch. Tournament. Tournament. I misspelled tournament with a B and two A's. Jesus Christ. New patch tournament. Bian. No, Amaru is a bigger name. Hero. 
Bian, and more. Oh boy, this is very exciting. This is actually better than the GSL. Holy crap. I, I need the link for this. Give me a second. I was completely unaware of this. I'm gonna set it up real fast. That is such an exciting thing. I love when you're not expecting something and then and, and then it's there. You know what I mean? That is actually very exciting. Thanks, Zane. Super chat, 65 Swedish kroner, financing Harstam's effort to disseminate clearly false information about mobster <laughs> incomes. <laughs> I, it wouldn't surprise me if the average mobster doesn't make so much money. <clears throat> and also, I think they use a lot of, like, child labor, no? Like, like I feel like a lot of the most dangerous tasks are being done by, like, 15 and 16-year-olds. So it's not a, a, it's not a very ethical work environment. And two, you're not even getting a good reward. It's kind of messed up. That is kind of messed up indeed. All right. I basically have it set up. Just give me five more seconds. And I, oh, is that here? Uh, I need this one separate. Okay. No, come on, Kevin. God, I'm so bad with technology. I hate technology. Says the man streaming. Uh, is this the one? Nice. All right. So we're just going to be waiting for this thing to uh, to kick off. We missed the first match. I won't spoil the result because the screen's already doing that. Um, <clears throat> oh, we got our next match, I think. Until sunrise. Remove my flux. So we can quickly go through the other game. Let's see what happened. Stats versus Maru. I think there's a loser bracket as well. It's nice camera quality, by the way. Is he sitting next to the... Is this called a boiler in English as well? What's this thing called? I think it's a boiler, right? Or the... Ke in Dutch we call it a kettle. I don't think you call it a kettle. He's sitting just right next to it. He's sitting next to a wall. Stats versus Maru. Actually, let's do a quick, uh, quickly look at the rooms, huh? Stats just completely empty next to a wooden wall. And Maru has a bunch of trophies. And I think a picture of himself back there. I think I personally prefer Maru's room. There's a little bit more personality in there. The fact that he has a massive light in the, the top left corner here that completely ruins his camera is something we're just going to have to accept. Is this correct volume? I, 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 I completely wasn't ready for this, guys. I'm so sorry. If I had known this, we would have been watching this instead of uh, watching me brabble on. I did destroy a Protoss player earlier. Let's see. This looks good. Nice Rebellion logo. Put it up here. Make myself a bit smaller. So he played two gas... He played Stargate. Oh, he's a Stargate Robo Enjoyer? Does he play the Hearthstone of Stargate? Oh, he legit copied my build. But how does he lose six? No, never mind. He's a Robo Enjoyer. People that lose six probes and then throw down a Robo should be locked up, I think. Uh, psychopaths. All of them. Let's see what happened next. Oh, actually, something good must have happened. Somewhere. Oh, this got pushed back. This looked okay. Until it didn't, I guess. That's always how it goes against Terran players. It looks good till you start taking some serious damage. Okay, and then here Maru is ahead. And then usually when Maru gets ahead, he doesn't lose much anymore. Gets a big drop in. This is a rough map as well sometimes. Oof. This is the end, isn't it? This is the end. Hold your breath and count to ten. Let the sky fall When it crumbles You will stand tall <laughs> Together with the sky fall well, This game went on for pretty long But right now it's 55 works to 72 So then stats attacks and then he loses You can go to the attack so, the Attack is here <coughs> 
Nice mic, huh? I was being sarcastic. You should have split that better. Pulls the boys instantly. Doesn't take no half measures, does he? The audio is a bit loud. Okay. This better? Yeah, yes, that was probably... Uh, oh, up the game volume a bit. The problem is, is that their their sounds are very loud. The individual sounds are very loud. But the the other stuff isn't, you know what I mean? It's hard to say what's perfect. I'll just keep it like this. If you guys want something else, then whatever. Do you think the new patch made it better for Protoss? Yeah, 100%. Whether you believe it's enough, I believe it's enough. But whether you believe it or not, it definitely is better for Toss than before. Like, we Terran got nerfed. And we feel good about ourselves because of that. Oh. Okay, so this was Marine first. Into Factory. Does he swap? No, oh, Mass Mind Drop. And then Banshee. So here the game is really good, or looks really good for Maru. And then triple drops. It's really a mess dropper, isn't he? Then he attacks at some point. Oh my god. Hey, these guys are way too good at the game. It's messed up. Alright, let's see if we have a live game. Oh my god, we have a live game. Oh, the build! This is the build. So for the people who have been missing it, I made a video last Wednesday, was it, I think? Two days ago. Where I played this particular build for an hour straight. This build is so good. It's actually ridiculous. I love this position as well. <laughs> For a 2 Rex, it's genius. Because you can use one SCV to remove the rocks on your own side, or to remove the minerals on your side, and then one to remove the minerals on the other side. It's really a kind of a genius play. This build is really difficult to hold, but there are ways. There are definitely ways. Now, what is the proper way if you already throw down your Nexus? Let me tell you, my dear friends. What you do is you get two batteries. You get a Stalker. No Warp Gate. You can also get a Zealot, although I'm not a huge fan of that. And then you get a Stargate. The Stargate is essential. The moment you get a Void Rail, you win the game. And then what you do is you just keep adding batteries and you keep adding Stalkers. Eventually, you're going to get outproduced. And then you have to give up your low ground for a bit, but then your void ray pops out. And then you're good. And then you win the game. That's all you care about. <clears throat> oh, he's gonna cancel the low ground. This is also a legitimate response. But you need to be careful. Because it can also be very awkward. Oh, come on, you clown. Don't lose stuff. Don't pull workers either. So 236, the concussive finishes. A robo is a, a robo is a bait. Robo is a bait. Robo is absolute bait. It can be good, but Void Ray is just better because it's a showstopper. With an Immortal, you can still lose to an SCV pool. If you have a Void Ray, however, nothing can kill you or it has to be Marines. So now there's a third Barracks on the way. I think this is brilliant. Honestly, I think this guy is a genius. Uh, a cure. He's, he's getting a second Barracks or a third Barracks and then a Refinery. Yeah, this is... I love this uh, this type of transition that he's doing here. I bet I should have been doing that as well. Whenever someone played one base against me, I still try to kill them every single time. Maxpex doesn't make voice. Maxpex also always loses to it. Oh, another super chat. A thousand Indian rupees. Which class do you find least easy to play with? I find Zerg the hardest. If I'm not focused when I'm playing Zerg, it feels by far the worst. However, if you feel like you're playing really well, Zerg, I think, is one of the most fun. It's probably the most fun, actually. If it, like if you're playing really well with Zerg, it feels like you're super in control. Yeah. Very satisfying race to play, I think, Zerg. But you need to be full focused. You can't just semi-focus. What the hell is he doing? Stim, combat shield. So maybe there's going to be like a follow-up push here with... A bunch of marines. Um, I don't quite understand why we're transporting a, a a probe to the other side. Are we really going to build a nexus right next to this guy's face? That just seems like a, a not so bright plan, does it now? Prism's going to make its way back home. 
If you can clear these barracks, I guess you're in a fine spot, no? And I don't really see a way to not clear these barracks. Like, if you kill Stim in combat, you win the game. But Stim is gonna be a banger. Oh no, he's gonna miss it. He's gonna kill Stom- He's gonna kill- He's gonna kill combat at least. That's something. He's gonna kill combat. And he's gonna probably lose these barracks as well. Which is actually a fairly big deal. Income-wise though, Classic is behind. No? Cap, sorry, I've been asked about this a lot already. What is your opinion on new maps for TOS in general? I looked at the new maps and I'm absolutely sure map makers are Protoss haters. Yeah, I think so too. It's not so good for TOS, I believe. Um, yeah, the, the, the maps I, I think are not great for TOS. Dynasty is good versus Zerg, I believe. But yeah, everything else is... Uh, it feels tricky in, in, in my mind. Well, we could be wrong about that. I, I often judge too quickly when it comes to maps. I like to, uh, you know, hold my judgment for now. Okay, he's gonna move up to the bunker here. He's gonna, uh, s what you call it, saturate it. Enter the bunker. No uh, SEVs here to repair, which is kind of weird. That is actually kind of weird, isn't it? A couple of SEVs wouldn't hurt him. Yeah, now he's trying to pull. It's gonna be too late. Hold position as well, accidentally. Uh, minor error here. First two medivacs on the way. Once medivacs pop out, even without combat shields, this feels like it could be kind of tricky to deal with. I'm loving the repair here. Not a huge fan of this four of this uh, marine marauder move out downstairs. It's gonna cost him a couple of units. Classic is letting these marines live for whatever reason. That shouldn't be the case. There we go. Now gonna start going at it. Has a nexus go being thrown down at the gold base, so it's gonna be one base versus two base, and. The, the, the second base being at the gold means that it's going to kick in really quickly. For now, however, 1,500 mineral income against 900. You get a snipe here on the pylon. No, not quite going to get it. These units will need to run back. As the Vikings now being produced to try and deal with the prism. You know what he can do at this point is go for a double drop towards the gold. And it's not even necessarily a bad play. It's not even necessarily a bad play. Combat shield on the way, that's perhaps exactly what Cure wants to wait for. Could pull the boy still as well, and has a decent angle of attack. I actually believe that Cure, despite being on a single base, is currently winning this game. Uh, charge has finished though. Gateway count is 3, that's not super high. You have the ability to build more immortals as well, but that's not being done quite yet. I mean, if you fight pre-combat shield, you're gonna get blasted. If you fight post combat, you're probably still gonna get blasted, to be honest. It's so many units. I think I might have been wrong. I forgot about the charge being there. Okay, combat finishing up in a couple of seconds. This is a scary attack, though. This is a really scary attack if you're classic, because you're all inning into someone that's down a base. It's gonna run back. Uh, that observer needs to be sniped, obviously. If that doesn't get sniped, you have full vision here as the Protoss player. That's feeling pretty good. Income for the first time in this game, uh, leaning into favor of our Protoss player, now with a gold base. You have a drop, a double drop being sent out. This is so transparent though, right? This is so freaking transparent. Yeah, it gets spotted as well. It's like you scan for the observers. Like, oh, I wonder what the scan is for. Probably not going to go drop. Yes, he is. Of course he's going to go drop. It's the only thing that makes any sense here. Prism spots us as well, as we have the double stalker plus immortal here. Going to deal some damage. I think Cure is taking too much time. And he knows that there's a gold base as well, so I'm not quite sure what he is waiting for. Every second that goes by is a good second right now for Classic. As he's outmining his opponent, he's getting blink, he's adding in extra gateways. I probably would have preferred seeing an extra immortal being produced before the extra gateways. I, I think the yeah, getting a getting an observer isn't bad, but you're playing against a single base opponent, so you know he's gonna need to, to make an attack. Also, this attack is being microed well, but it's also quite scary, right? It's like what is the what is the actual plan here? Can he recall with that, or is he just gonna die to the Vikings then? Needs to find a good position right now to fight in. We have a super battery available. We have a bunch of force fields here as well. So this is looking quite decent. More zealots coming in. Ooh, good force fields. Good initial force fields for sure. Okay, classic is absolutely fine. Phenomenal hold. That's pretty pretty crazy, because I think his response initially was was interesting. Uh, did manage to hold in the end. Now we have the SCVs coming off the line as well. As uh, Classic is going to start chasing. I think that is a bit over eager perhaps. Do you really want to be fighting away from your super battery? Apparently Classic says, yeah, no problem for me. He has the five gateways. Can warp in new rounds of Zealots at any point in time. Uh, but yeah, it really doesn't need to be out here in my mind. Back to the batteries where we go. That makes a lot of sense to me. Double Vikings landing now as well.
Ooh, super battery. It's going to be uh, chasing this army away from it either way, so it doesn't really have much of an impact. But yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for uh, game number one here. Tomb Cure and Classic. Classic's going to take the first uh, map here on Alcyone. Terran players will point to this game and say that the matchup is now officially unplayable. I mean, Cure went for a 2-Rex Marauder proxy. Classic had a prepared response. And then won the game 2-base versus 1-base. That does smell like imbalance to me, if you ask me. Not gonna lie, I thought Terran had it. Yeah, me too. Not gonna lie either, buddy. I feel like if he goes earlier with the SCVs, like the first push, the moment combat finishes, and he, he gets like 16, 17 SCVs there, you kill that gold base, then you go back home with the SCVs, I think you're in a good spot, to be honest. I'll get you guys on here the music. He was too hesitant and kind of scared at the moment. At one point, yeah, maybe. It's so hard to say, though, because don't forget that we have full vision of what's going on, and he probably has absolutely no clue as to what's kicking off. So I just got to kind of keep that in mind. Ooh, cure. Ooh, classic. Not a nice room. Let's take a quick look at cure's room again. His bed is made. He has curtains. What the hell is this thing back here? It's like one of these things that sprays some uh, nice scent into the air every couple of minutes. I feel like this is the door to a bathroom. I don't think that's the outside, right? It's like a studio apartment that he has. And there's like a kitchen probably on his left. Classic. He has like, this is like a separate room. Like his office, basically. There's a closet here. Maybe his bed is on the left side. It's possible, but unlikely. I love that these cameras always give a nice a nice look into the lives of people, you know. A mosquito killer? Nah, they don't have mosquitoes in Korea. I legit never seen a mosquito in Korea in my entire life. I've been to Korea many times. Can't recall a single time where it's like, man, too many mosquitoes here. Air control air air conditioning remote holder? Nah, maybe. I don't think so. Alright, Marine first opener. I'm a big fan of this. I also have May on Fire. Did you get any maps in the new map pool, uh, May on Fire? Hey, first time, first time catching a stream. Hope you've been having a great day so far. My day was going great until you showed up. So if the second part of this stream is going to be worse, we know who to blame. Anthony P. We should make a segment before games with pro gamers showing their room. <laughs> it would be very interesting. We could do it though. You got one freestyle map? Which map is yours, uh, May on Fire? Let me see if I can flame it yet. All right, what do we have over here? Twilight. Oh, I actually missed the early game a little bit. Amphion, that golden wall-like with pirate tile set. Yeah, I know Amphion. I don't mind it. It's, it's definitely different. I heard some complaints about the Reaper path, though. <laughs> people, people aren't happy about the Reaper path. That's something different. I don't mind it. It's fun. I had some good games on there already. All right. <coughs> Let's see what we're doing now. Oh, wait, I don't have the noise on. Sound, sorry, my bad. A um, couple of gateways. Three gate, Robo, Blinky. Good 
good pylon placement. Honestly, just a standard three gate blink opener. As it, it seems, oh, is that a double cyclone drop? You know what? The, you know how some builds are really hit or miss. I feel like a double cyclone drop is very mid or miss. Like in PVT, I never see a double cyclone drop kill like eight workers. It's always like three workers, or they lose the medevac with the two cyclones in it. It actually never does big damage. This is one of the most mid builds in the entire Terran arsenal, which is crazy because they have so many builds that aren't mid that you can just use. I was going to go for an attack with it. I thought it was just going to be straight up. Uh, I don't mind this as much. Although it's not good against what he's playing against either. 3 gate Robo is probably the best defensive build order that exists. So build order wise, this is looking very poor for Cure. Um, execution wise, we're going to have to wait and see. I rate Classic relatively high uh, when it comes to not wetting the bat. He killed like six Marines here for free. Hasn't lost anything. Second and third barracks are extremely delayed by more than over a minute. That blink forward, I wasn't the, the biggest supporter of, but as long as he doesn't lose any stalkers here, this, this opener was phenomenal. I mean, what do you want me to say? This was just straight up good. He's going to start his charge and a Templar archives here. I wonder if that's going to be for Storm. Because the forge confuses me. Why would you get attack or defense upgrades pre-Storm? Confusing stuff now. Wonder if he can kill this depot. I think he can. Tank's definitely out of position. If it was just a little bit forward, it would have been great. Could have saved that depot. Ooh, he's gonna lose a cyclone there as well. Classic with some solid control. Liberator potentially could deal some damage. He's gonna get spotted here by one of the many pylons that is being built around the map. Talking about freaking pylon walls over here. Holy cow. A vision for days, this man. Um, is he warped in a Templar in the main base? Templars don't shoot up despite them having a water balloon range attack. Here comes the Liberator. Gonna get a single Stalker Warp. And I think a recall is actually necessary. Maybe he recalled but to the wrong base. Loses a second worker here as well. He's gonna just lose his lip. People that play Storm always have insanely low supply. Add in a Force and a plus one upgrade and you're gonna be even lower in supply. I'm a huge fan of this, uh, this drop that's heading in here right now. Not because I think this drop is some stroke of genius. The reason why I like this drop is because Cure is in a crap spot. And he needs to get something done right now. And maybe this 8 Marine drop is going to be it. Stim hasn't even finished up yet, so it's just slow Marines. Tanks not being pushed back, charge now finished up. If you have a single warp in of like 6 charge slots here, these tanks, they just... They eat dust for the next 5 years of their life. Luckily for Cure, he's going to be moving back. Has scouted the storm at this point, but has lost mainly all of his marines. This didn't quite work out the way he wanted to, although he's up in, in workers by quite a bit. If Cure now knows what's good for him, he's going to stay at home, maybe build a wall or two, uh, put the Vikings back in the sky, and can perhaps play a defensive game. It's going to be rough, though, because he's going to be fighting against a very strong Classic, who will have relatively high supply. I assume a couple of Templars. Feels like Classic is almost doing a de defensive all-in here. He doesn't have a prism with this army. Now he's starting it. Cannot attack pre-prism. It's going to get plus one attack as well. <laughs> Novel way of countering storm by not having any marines. <laughs> Can't storm the marines if you let them die before. God, that's genius. This is also why he isn't producing any workers. <laughs> Can't lose workers to a storm drop if you don't have them. What is a defensive all-in? It's basically hoping your opponent attacks into you. And then if they don't, then you're forced to counter-attack. But it's kind of awkward. Um, it, it felt like that's, that might have been something that Classic was going for because he delayed his Prism for so long. Like, he went Immortal before Prism. So as a result, this push hits quite a bit later. He ideally would be hitting a bit faster with this. By about maybe 30 seconds or so. And then, I mean, there's still no combat shield, so this should absolutely win the game. Like, it's a good wall, semi wall though. And I love the way that he's controlling this so far. Is there a Viking in the sky? Turret actually helping out as well. First Storm's gonna rain down on top of this army. And there's a lot of units here. One Immortal in the back is shooting at a depot. As um, workers now being pulled, tanks have disappeared from this map. SCVs probably need to piss off here, right? Ooh, mine shot from the back. Actually gonna get quite a bit of damage in there as well. 
I mean, Cure uh, survives, I guess. It's better than I would have given him two minutes ago. Because his spot looked awful after the early game. 66 workers to 68. Fourth base timing quicker for the Terran player. Five Rex is active. So now it's time for, yep, second eBay as well as Armory. And once these are out, yeah, maybe Cure can do something. Yeah, I'm not saying this is a great spot for Cure, but... If he gets to survive against this push, it might be a much better spot. I normally watch your videos at two times speed. Please talk faster in these live vids. Just go back to the back of, to the start of the stream and start watching from the start at two times. And in 25 minutes you'll catch up. But I'll be 25 minutes in the future. So, you know, you have some more time you can watch two times speed in. Cure's actually kind of stabilizing here, which is scary. Siege tanks used to be trash in TVP back when I played in HOTS. Why are they viable now? I think a lot of people tend to build siege tanks against blink opener. Just to make sure they don't take so much damage and they're kind of stuck with them. They're not great aggressively, but they're fine-ish. They, they, do, they do a decent job. It's not a brilliant unit, but it's fine. Does EMP on shield battery works? Yes, sir. EMP also works on uh, command centers, on orbital commands. See, that mine would have been super annoying pre-patch because it would have just been sitting there till the end of time. Four depots on the way for Cure. Cure is just... A so this is going to be what we call a fake late game, okay? So be, be wary of that. And of this series in general, okay? Terrans are going to be pointing to this series because they need propaganda pieces right now that the patch has gone too far. And this is going to be one of their first propaganda pieces. Classic versus Cure. 2-0 in favor of Classic. And I'll say one game was a late game because it went longer than 10 minutes. See, I'm already preparing you for the propaganda. This is why Protoss has been getting buffed for the past few months. It's because we're winning the propaganda war right now. And we need to stay on top. This is not a, this is not a good example. Cure tried some wank cheese at two, two Rex Marauder, one of the many cheeses, and then picked the worst possible build order against what Classic was doing. That was unlucky, but it can happen. And then Cure still managed to survive, okay? That's what we will be saying. And then Terrans say, yes, but the Terrans only play these builds because playing a straight-up macro game is impossible. And then we need to have examples where playing a straight-up macro game is still possible. Okay, this is this is serious, serious propaganda business. He saw Blink and committed to Cyclone Marine. Exactly. Now, now you're really getting in the spirit already. I love that. Although he didn't really see Blink, but at Terrans, they can't pay attention to the details. Otherwise, they would be building Ravens in the late game. So you can always catch Terrans with like just sneaking in a fake detail like that. Yeah, that's very good. I love that. This is an interesting fight here. Not enough Vikings, is there? Where are the Vikings? Ship weapon uh, upgrades are coming through. Classic going up to 1, 2. Is that 6? Six? 6 bases. Surprised uh, Classic doesn't take the 9 o'clock. Like the one below his third base first. Seems like a logical step to take here. His army is actually relatively weak. No disruptors in there. Needs to be kind of careful. So if he's going to get fully EMP'd and then gets a bad fight, you can still get blasted here. I'm not sure how high the gateway, gateway count is. These are some good storms. Uh, Prism's going to be sent straight into its death. That was a really bad fight for, uh, for, for Classic, though. He killed a couple of Vikings, or almost killed a bunch of Vikings, but he needs to finish them, because otherwise he just lost 30 supply for nothing. And I think at this point... Ooh, those are a lot of free ghosts here that are being given away. That's minus three, I think it was. 
Vikings need to be repaired as well. We get another big stim, double prisms on the way. As we see another nexus being taken here on the far left. It's five base currently, soon to be again, or sorry, four base versus seven soon. Um, fifth base is done here for a cure, could fly over. I actually think he's building an extra, okay, yeah, yeah, he's building a fifth on the bottom side. Right, so he's on five bases, five versus seven. Two more starports, fusion core on the way. This is all very fair. That's triple robos right now, pumping three colossus at a time. I don't think the Viking count is good enough to deal with that. And I love this thought here, this this type of rotation coming out of uh, classic. So he's gonna lose a bunch of units, and then the double prism is gonna allow him to re uh, rebuild those units in his opponent's main base. And that's what we're waiting for here. Look at that. That's nine zealots. That's a DT in there as well. We have a uh, ooh. Bit of a base trade coming in right now. I think this looks very solid though for Classic. The reason why I say that is because Classic has an insane amount of units. He has Templar at home as well. He has good reinforcement ability. This should be good for him. Like if, if ever a base trade was going to be good for a Protoss, this is the base trade that's going to be good. Prisms do go down. Starting to get a little bit afraid though as the Vikings take out base after base. Main base of Cure is not actually getting killed. The main has not been breached. So then really what we got to look at is the the base count kill. So right now two bases have been killed on, on both sides. With Classic having more bases remaining but also losing a lot of workers. It's going to lose a third base up there. Cure. Oh, it's taking a bit of damage. Doesn't quite have the medevac count to heal this entire army. I think it's really important for Classic right now that he fights this army before the reinforcements arrive. But I don't think he can. Another ooh, good EMP there. It's going to deny that storm from landing, if there even was a storm on the way there. If Vikings need to go back into the skies, how many are there still remaining? This is a very good army split out of Cure. It is a good concave. Viking count perhaps not quite high enough though, and uh, accidentally lifted 8 or 10 of his units as well. On top of all of that, it seems like Classic is just barely going to be capable of uh, squeezing this one out here. This game got way closer than I thought it really would be. Honestly, impressive performance out of Classic because... Or sorry, impressive performance out of Cure because he was freaking dead after the first six minutes or so. Classic managed to leverage into a, an extremely big lead. I'm really surprised by all of this. So now what Terrans usually do is that they sit on a low base count and then try to max out. I don't even think that's ever going to be possible. The bank for Classic was simply too big. If he had, like, no bank there, then maybe. But yeah, that last fight. The, the five Colossus transition, when there only was, like, seven or seven or six Vikings or so, really helped him out. Colossus are very powerful if you have them in very large numbers and there's not sufficient Vikings. And also the, the extra Immortals. I'm not sure if they were there already, but if they were, I bet that would have helped. All right. 2-0. Protoss player wins. That means that so far today we have one series in which the Protoss wins 2-0 and one series in which the Terran wins 2-0. Up next we're going to be watching Solar versus Gumio, Azurk versus Terran, as well as Hero versus Beyond. So we'll get a decision on which race is the most broken. Is it going to be Terran or Protoss? It's a best of three in best of threes. Good lord. The propaganda minis ministers... Ministers? of uh, the respective factions have been warming up for this moment for days now. I wasn't even aware of the fact that this was happening. It's kind of messed up, if you ask me. Okay, let's see if I missed anything here. Um, oh, Gnoi gifting a subscription to May on Fire 15 minutes ago. Thank you very much. Uh, what else did we get here? And that's i already shouted these out so that's all good once again thank you yo yo to rocks for the uh, 3000 indian rupees that you gave me today very kind of you buddy that's like code as level games yeah of course this is code as level games i said this is better than yesterday's gsl group i wasn't lying no, uh, no, I don't think I am lying, actually. It has all the players from yesterday's GSL group. Maybe I'm missing one. 
Yesterday was Beyond Hero Maru Classic. Beyond Maru Hero Classic. Beyond Maru Hero Classic. So yeah, all the players from yesterday's GSL group, but there's more. I haven't seen yesterday's GSL yet. I'm giving you five seconds to tune out before we start spoiling stuff. Actually, I'm not planning on spoiling anything, but it's dangerous to be in the chat. It's dangerous to be in the stream in general if you haven't seen it yet. If you don't want to get spoiled. I feel like that's just an esports thing, no? Not wanting to get spoiled. Like, how is it possible? Like in real sports. Real sports. Manly sports. Where they kick balls. Like this doesn't happen. I don't think I ever heard my dad complain about the fact that someone spoiled the result. There's a huge thing in the US with people missing the Super Bowl and not wanting to get spoiled. But surely they're not going to complain about the news for reporting it. Or their favorite NFL streamer. Like, you're not going to listen to an NFL podcast. Why would you really talk about the Super Bowl? Yeah, I wonder why. Idiot. I feel like this is more common in... Uh, it's like people will go onto Reddit or TeamLiquid.net, you know? Oh, not properly spoiled. So, yeah, it's spoiled again. So, yeah, big surprise. I get the biggest tournament of the year going on and you're confused as to why people would post about the results. It's like... I watched the Tour de France in the summer in the evening after the stage is already over. And let me tell you, it's so hard not to get spoiled. You have a lot of friends that are into cycling. I honestly think I could go years without hearing about the Tour. Like, because no one talks to me about it. Although Irene and I usually watch the little highlights that they produce. Uh, the five to six minutes, it's fun. There are good good videos as well. Good commentary put together well. Usually come out 30 minutes after the stage or so. They do a very good job with these. We're still just waiting for the next game to start. I'm not sitting here just gassing you guys up about the Tour de France. Don't worry. Thanks for the two euros, by the way. Christopher Grass. Grass. It's a good last name. You wouldn't last in a gang either. I think a grass is a different word for a snitch, isn't it? Grass meaning street language. Street language. Slang. Does slang stand for street language? Is that an abbreviation? I never thought of that. Is that true? Slang. Ethymology. Slang is short for shortened language. Oh, no. There are all manner of false word origins that get tossed around the web, but one of the more common ones I see is that slang is short for shortened language. And while it's believable, there is no historical record to indicate that this was ever true. This supposed origin also doesn't entirely make sense because slang terms aren't necessarily shorter than the terms they replace. Look at this crap. Oh, I can't show you. Uh, the game just started. Let's go there then. Hate to see it. But it's not true. I thought I just figured it out on the spot. What was I doing before that? Slang, slang. I was looking up a word. What word I was looking up? A grass. It's a snitch. I knew it. Weird. 
Do you ever lose games in ranked? Yeah. That's what I build my career on, is losing games in ranked. That's what I'm known for. That's my gimmick, you know? <laughs> it's not a great gimmick for a professional StarCraft player, but a gimmick nonetheless. So if someone tells you to touch grass, you go touch a snitch. No, that's not how you use it. It's so obvious. The, the words derive meaning from their context. And in this context, everyone knows what grass means. <sighs> Unbelievable. Oh, crap, crap. They always play the music in these types of breaks. And this is how I get my stuff demonetized if I don't mute in time. It's freaking stressful watching these live feeds, man. Let me tell you. I thought the losing was saved for tournaments. No, I don't need to save it. I can do it both in ranked and in tournaments. I have the skill to do both. <laughs> do StarCraft Pro players take growth hormones to bulk up before tournaments? No, but steroids are very popular right now in the StarCraft community. Yeah. We've all been eating the, the horse meat. Yeah. <laughs> all right. What do you think about Dynasty and PvZ? Will all Zerg veto it? R yes, we're gonna see a couple of um, of interesting cheeses on it. I think it's like, oh, that's a cool cheese. Oh, that's interesting. Um, like one with single-use builds, you know. We should call them toilet paper builds because toilet paper, hopefully, is single-use. I feel like it's a, it's a TP build. Or just toilet paper. So you see a bunch of toilet paper. And then from there on out, I think it's going to be Vitos for Zergs all around. It's similar to what you saw with Rod, who said. There's a couple of toilet paper. A couple of toilet papers. Some TP builds. Yeah, I don't think this slang is not going to stick with the kids. <laughs> if you can use a build two to three times, we call them condom builds. I don't think that's quite how it works. But it does explain your large family. <laughs> Alright. Reaper's jumping in here, getting a couple of kills. And this is the... I think this was four Reaper, right? Four Reaper into triple CC. Got the stim as well. You get demonetized for not muting the music. Have you ever tried disputing it with YouTube claims? Well, if the music is in their system and they spot it, what you can do is you can uh, manually cut it out afterwards. But majority of your revenue comes in the first few days. So there's really not much of a point. Uh, but you can still do it. But also then you have to like mute that entire part. Or sometimes they, they pick too much out. And they're usually quite good about it. But it's, it's also just a hassle. And their processing speeds are slow. Uh, when it comes to their uh, video manager. So I rather not. <sighs> Why would you veto Dynasty as Zerg player? The map has a solid layout for Zergs. It's because you can't take the gold, and the third base is really difficult. Can't take the gold because adepts can just move there. Or Hellions, and you can just deny your mining. So it's really difficult. Yeah. Simple as that, really. As easy as A, B, C. I think Solar has some of the cleanest early game in this matchup, man. Watching this guy play ZVT is really a treat. I freaking love watching Solar play. If you're a standard player, I always tell you just watch Solar. You want to learn how to play StarCraft? Watch Solar. Unless you're a Terran player and it's fairly useless. But <clears throat> otherwise, watch freaking Solar, man. He's so good. He has like two builds. He either plays double Evo or fast bailing nest into Lair. And then he just goes into Bane, Hydra. Uh, then he throws down a Lurker then, as well as a Nidus network. He gets some Vipers. He builds a Nidus in his opponent's main base. He doesn't put anything in the Nidus network. It's a fake every single time. 
Then he morphs three lurkers. He pretends to attack with them, and then he'll never build lurkers again. <clears throat> and then he continues playing the uh, Hydra Ling Bane Viper for the entirety of the game. And then in the end, he loses because Hydra Ling Bane Viper doesn't trade well against Ghost Tank. Or he wins because he manages to continuously deny the opponent's fifth or sixth base. These are, like, I could literally write out his game plan on, uh, on a coaster. That's what you call them, right? The things you drink beer from? Or, well, the thing you put your beer on. It's a coaster, a beer coaster. Or just a regular coaster. I think it's a beer, it's yeah, just a coaster. Coaster is fine. A napkin? Napkin's also fine. Ah, thank you, Bergen. Burgy. Kind words. This is an interesting drop that didn't do very well. 67 workers for Solar, uh, which is a very high worker count to defend anything on, and he managed to do it just fine. I want Solar to type screw you, Harstam, in the in game chat and make 30 Muras. Yeah, and I want you to give me $500. Like, neither of these things are gonna happen. I know what so Solar has been playing the exact same thing for the past nine months, and he's really happy with it. Whenever he loses, he believes it's because of his own mistakes, and whenever he wins, it's because a Terran is underpowered. At least that's what the Terrans will say. Like, let's face facts, guys. He's not going to be changing this up, up anytime soon. The $500 have a higher chance, unironically. A higher chance on that, yeah. <clears throat> you know, like a, a month ago or so, some guy donated donated me five hundred dollars at like three a.m. when I wasn't even streaming, and I didn't realize for weeks because I don't check those things. So you you know, very often, unless it pops up. Yeah, so he probably was drunk, came over, like, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to prank Harstam real good. It's going to send him 500 bucks in the middle of the night. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> That's a, it was a nice surprise for me when I figured it out. <laughs> it was also anonymous. Like, I couldn't, no message back, nothing. Anonymous, no message. Beautiful stuff. Oh, interesting little fight here as uh, the Ling Bay. This is a sick position, except maybe should have had a couple more tanks further back. No, he perhaps he didn't. Gumiho with an insane spot. Look at that. Just kind of rolling over his opponent here. Three rexing, or sorry, eight rexing it out here. Feels like an eight rex, right? Yes, sir. Solar was not ready for it. Went up to 82 workers and died. I'm sorry, I haven't really been focusing too much on the game. Reading the chat a bit too much. <laughs> nice prank you should do it more often yeah i think so too i like that prank this is a rough map i think i think actually all maps are really rough for zerg right now like crazy difficult crazy difficult you guys want to see something on amphion amphion has the shortest rush distance for a reaper i think ever that we've ever had i think this is correct It smells correct to me. It's crazy fast, at least. Psi Delta is not so bad. No, it's not so bad. But Psi Delta, I don't think was getting played a lot in best of threes pre-patch. I think because Zerg's usually vetoed it. Are we going to get a room review for these two? Much more to investigate? Yeah, for sure. We can do that. I haven't done them yet. Solar's room is probably the sickest room out of all. It's because he just has so many pillows. Or whatever they're called. Plushies? Once we get the full screen, we'll do it. I'm, 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 I'm setting up mentally to click them when we get the full screen.
I think Gumio has a green screen, but he accidentally ordered it in pink. <laughs> what a mistake. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I knew something went wrong. Oh, there we go. All right. What do we have here? Trophies to the right of his. Good looking hair, by the way. New York Yankees. Yankees? Yankees. Surely it's just the Yankees. New York Yankees jacket. Probably his wife's jacket or something. Trophy, 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 trophy. Uh, plushies. Little figurines. It's like Pokemons or something. I see like a mushroom for Mario. Or he likes to get high. It's not allowed. And this is a crate for probably a dog. I think this is the best room we've seen so far. I'm not a fan of plushies myself. If I were to live in this room, I think I'd go crazy. But he has a vision for it. And that's what I appreciate by itself. Up next, Gumiho. Ooh. It's like a couple of bottles of, <laughs> of, of, of lotion or sunscreen of some kind. Is the pink screen, which was supposed to be green. This is the most compact vacuum cleaner I've seen. Look at that. It fits exactly. You see that? Poop right into that little closet. That thing must have no sucking power at all. There's a window here. And then what is this? It's like a plaque. Wow. It feels too much like an office, like someone else works here. He gets kicked out at night so his dad can do some lawyer stuff or something, you know? Like, who has this many binders? Like, what's he writing about? My deepest, most intricate thoughts on Terran versus Zerg balance. Part 17. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a big writer at nights. <laughs> Today I played 35 games versus Zerg, of which I won two. It was not a good day. <laughs> I believe that all mech units should be receiving big buffs. <laughs> <laughs> it's his folder of builds? No shot. <laughs> he has a different binder for every pro player. One day you will get a binder. <laughs> Got good old Harstum again. <laughs> jokes. <laughs> God, I love jokes. All right, what are we doing here? Triple CC opener, very standard stuff. <clears throat> see how he's gonna follow this up tech lab it's not getting a starboard though you know what this feels like I actually don't know what it feels like this is a weird maybe he's gonna add a second barracks now He's still playing single gas. Maybe it's like a... His second barrack should already have been thrown down. If that's what he wants to do. You see the money that he's floating. Now it's the second gas? Look how much money he's floating. This makes no sense. If he wants to... So now he gets a starboard? Do you think he forgot about the starboard? Second barracks and starboard at the same time. That barracks could have been faster, no? He was floating the entire time. This is gonna be some weird build again. I can feel it. It's like a 2 one, one type of vibe with four or six aliens. I don't know if he has two more at home. I missed that. My bad. He's gonna try and commit. Isn't quite gonna succeed, though. Like two on maybe there's an armory in play here. <laughs> it kind of it smells like an armory, you know? Like a hellbat all in behind this? Because he's continuing to build Hellions here. Like what's the what's the deal with you, you know? Like what actually is the deal? Surely that's Hellbats, no? Is it is he just gonna play Marine Hellion? That's so uncommon. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Didn't I say it? Feels a little late though on that armory because he's about to start hitting. 
It's gonna pick up eight marines here to, to clear that overlord. <coughs> this is a funky build. I mean, it smells weird. It really does. Two eBays into arm or armory into two eBays, double gases. Combat shield, it's just gonna be a hellbat attack. The second barracks timing doesn't need to be perfect. It's gas that limiting at this point. It's limiting what though? If you're gonna build a barracks and you're floating 400 minerals, you could have just built it earlier. And his reactor was idle for quite a while as well. So unless you just don't want to have marines, this makes is 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 a mistake. Objectively. I still have no clue what he's trying to do. He's like running around with some with some dudes right now. He's gonna turn this one into a hellbat. Turn that into a hellbat. This is a really weird attack. You know what I found out? Is that whenever Terrans do really weird attacks that look too technical, they often lose the game. They often just get lost in their own sauce, you know? I sometimes have that as well. I once had a friend that told me that the best build in PvZ is to play two base... two base Phoenix into Immortal Drop into DTs. And then the plan was... To kill overlords with the phoenix, use the immortals to snipe spores, and then have the DTs win you the game. Or to deny a fort base or something. This build was god awful. That's kind of what I feel like we're watching here. It's like he rode it out at night in one of these big binders. My new build. Then I fly here with two aliens and three marines. Well, at the same time, five Hellions and a Reaper hit the third. While at the same time, half a Hellbat with two Mines hit his fifth base. While at the same time, a Liberator is sieged up in my own main to stop the Nidus that inevitably will go up. Like, and then just dies to a Ling Flood. This is what usually happens. When, you have, when your plans become too fancy, very often the right answer is just to, to hit the other guy with like a... with a big club or something like that. The primitive caveman often wins versus the engineer. Because while the engineer is building a, a new high-tech weapon, the caveman has beaten him up with his giant club. Dish. One point for the people with 20 IQ and zero for the genius 150 IQ. Hate to see it. <laughs> Infestation pit coming up right now. I wonder what it's going to be for. Maybe we're going to see Hydra Link Bane into Viper again, coming out of Solar. That would be kind of a big surprise. That I don't think a lot of people would have seen coming before this series. Kumiya is actually clearing a lot of freaking creep, by the way. That's a good move. Not many people know this, but creep isn't just aesthetically pleasing for Zerg, but it also gives movement speed benefits and allows you vision of wherever your creep tumor is. That is why creep is good, not because the map looks purple. A lot of people are not actually aware of that. So you have a freaking four marauders in production right now. Solar's uh, hitting that hive button hard. 2-2 two, two has started too. More banelings on the way. And what Solar wants right now is a massive trade. And look what Gumio is giving him. On a silver platter. Actually, on a golden platter. No. On a platinum platter. On a diamond platter. On a mid-masters platter. Look at that. He was going to give him a massive fight. That's exactly what Solar wants. Served on a grand master's platter. Take it. There we go. Partially of creep, but the initial sp uh, speed boost there still helping out. Trying to close the gap with that army. This is all pre-2-2 as well. The perfect timing, legit for Solar to hit. He's building up a bank and Gumiho was uh, closing on, on a max out. And that should be pretty much 
game. I don't think there's going to be anything here that Gumio can do. Um, a lurker then has been produced. This is a fake lurker then. Uh, we're soon going to see uh, Nidus Network being added in as well. That's also going to be a fake Nidus Network. As a Terran, you can just ignore these things. Seismic Spines, that's being researched right now. Fake. Uh, I'm surprised we haven't seen a single Viper in production yet, because that's the favorite unit of Solar. Fort base is up here. Oh, there comes the Viper. <clears throat> and more Banelings coming in. We have... Wait, what the hell is that upgrade? Is that Caduceus Reactors being upgraded rather than Liberator Range? What? Messed up. As uh, Hydra Bane's moving in forward. 2-2 two -two versus 2-2. Two -two. And that means that uh, with this type of Bane count, Solar's just gonna straight up win. Evens up the score here in his best of three. <sighs> As Gumiho, despite his genius build order, doesn't quite manage to get a lead. Tin, tin. I think the Medivac upgrade is hella underrated. It is underrated, yet, yet, it is also worse than the Advanced Ballistics upgrade. So I think you should always get Advanced Ballistics. This game, it just didn't matter, though. He was dead. What tournament is this? This is the Stars War... This is the actual name of the tournament. I'm not making this up. Stars War 1 or Stars War 2? Stars War is the qualifier. The closed qualifier. It's a tournament that's being played in China relatively soon. The, I think, 15th of May or so. 15th to 17th is what I want to say. Do you think they had to pay royalties for the tournament name? Nah, I don't think so. Stars War? Nah. You move one letter around, it's a completely different word. Solar will win. Not sure about how this series is going to finish. Okay, look at this, though. Look at this. <laughs> this is the map. Okay, Amphion. This is the map with the shortest rish, rish. The shortest rush distance for the Reaper. That I think is... He's opening with a gas first! What the hell? Oh, my God. What is he... What? This is triggering me. I'm actually getting triggered. Okay, so he's opening up with a gas first, then builds the barracks right next to the spot, so it's gonna have the shortest rush distance. I like one of those parts. So it's still gonna be hit very fast, and with a gas first, you're gonna have a quicker factory as well. You know what I would have loved to see here on this map? A cheeky little two rex Reaper. I think that would have been great. I think that actually would have been good. I think you could block with your second pylon. Do you think or did you confirm it? What is it they say again? Trust but verify. That's what you should do. I trust you, man in the chat. But I also want you to verify. And then I will need to verify your verification. Because I trust you, but I also need to verify. You'll try it right now? Go ahead, Evan. Will believe you on your word. Except I will also test it myself after. After believing you on your word. Okay, Fast Factory coming out. Still needs to fly back that barracks now. So Reactor is going to be delayed. Reaper's coming in. Look at the timing here on this Reaper. Oh my god. This is freaking orgasmic. 220! And this was of a gas first. Which means that if you're playing this with a barracks first, you're going to be hitting at what? 217? 216? That's before the links pop out. And even now, look how much time this guy has. He's just freaking buzzing around like a bee. Six links were produced and he lost one. That is not good, especially against Gas First. I think if you play double Barracks Reaper here, this map is almost a veto for the Zerg. Holy crap, that hits like a freaking truck. The Queen finishes at 236, which means that if you hit at 216, you have 20 seconds without a Queen. You know what a player like Beyond can do in 20 seconds with a Reaper? Like, the queen pops out and there's nothing to defend anymore. Like, five drones have died. Six links. Bit the dust. Your creep tumor's been sniped. 
before you even lay it down. That's how it's how they go. It's crazy. <sighs> pool first, then even against pool first, is Reaper arrives before your links are out. Is what I heard. I'm not sure if it's accurate. This is what people have been telling me. Ooh, it's a BC rush, ladies and gentlemen. It's a battle cruiser rush. The battle cruiser, despite being a capital ship unit, has often been utilized by Terran players as the initial air unit. Not just to control the pace of the game, but also to allow for significant harassment of the opponent's resource gathering. Starting a raven, that's a fake raven. How do you know it's a fake raven? You know it's a fake raven, be what? You know it's a fake raven because no one builds ravens in this matchup. That's how you know it. It's truly really not that, uh, it's not that deep. See, cancels both the, uh... no, start it again. Observer's gonna show us if it's been scouted. Actually, it doesn't show us anything. No, it does. So now Solar, based on the lack of cloak and the lack of anything building on that starport, should know to delay his spores. Standard timing for spores is between 425 and 430 against a two base build. Against Gasfer, it should actually be quicker. So every second that Solar delays his spores here is a second that is being allowed because Gumiho showed that nothing was building there and that's a lot of extra mining okay so that's a single spore going down right now at 4 f 445 but no triple spores <clears throat> solar is taking it easy here man he's he's playing very very uh, solid good scouting information utilizes that scouting information to delay spores for as much as possible and does have higher mining because if you build the spore earlier it means that that's a drone that's not mining he does need to build spores eventually, though. He's pushing it a little bit far at this point. As the BC pops out, it's going to teleport in towards the main base. And now there's no spore there. It's nice that you, you know, delayed building that spore. But you went a bit too far. End of the deep end. Not great. Six drones going down, seven drones going down, Hellings at the same time hitting this base as well as ten workers fall, eleven workers fall, and Solar is not just in a world of trouble, but... Well, no, he's, yeah, he's just in an actual world of trouble. His entire world is trouble. He's been booted down to hell, and in hell there's Hellions and battlecruisers everywhere. Twenty workers going down in a relatively short amount of time. Third base has finished up for Gumiho. Who, by the way, is following this up with mechanical play. Now, that's very interesting. Mechanical play is very different from bionic play. Uh, biological play. Bio, marines, marauders, ghosts, reapers. They don't have a hard shell. And they can be healed by medifacts. Mechanical units, however, don't quite have that luxury. But they can be repaired instead. Often bigger units that require more supply pack more of a punch, but they give up a little bit of mobility. That's really one of the main differences between mechanical and bionicals. Uh, what the hell is this upgrade? I've never seen that before. What is that upgrade? Is that the new Cyclone Speed upgrade? I know that they changed it because of lore purposes. Hurricane Engines, it's called. It used to be Hurricane Thrusters. But apparently Cyclones don't have thrusters. I don't even know what that means. Actually, I do know what that means. But uh, so, so, so they changed the, 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 the little... The little icon of it and the name as well. Freaking lore accurate balance counts over here. You love to see it. A couple of cyclones being added in. Double armory as well. Seven corruptors also on the way. You know why it's so smart to play mechanical units against Solar? It's because he can play Hydra Bane Viper against it. This is underrated. You're getting him out of his comfort zone. Because his comfort zone is with Hydra Ling Bane. That means that this automatically isn't his comfort zone because this isn't Hydra Ling Bane. 
Mac is the most brain dead playstyle known to men. True. Upgrade name Hurricane. Nice. I'm glad that isn't bugged. Love to see it. Oh. How did this game get so even after so many drones died? Aha. Uh -huh. You believe that this game is even, but me, the enlightened video game caster, knows that it isn't even. Gumio is up, about 10 supply, has a fort base done, is up in eco, and is playing mech while fighting a roach army. Roaches inflate supply. They're not worth their supply. If you're maxed out on roaches, your army is worth maybe 170 supply of a real army. Okay, you have a garbage level army. Bottom tier. Bottom of the barrel. Is the bottom of the barrel really that much worse than the top of the barrel? I guess it has to do with beer, right? Because you have beer barrels. And then the top of the barrel is going to be fresher beer. I feel like nowadays the bottom of the barrel is going to taste the same as the top of the barrel. Bottom of the barrel is all the sediment that falls down. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. So you sell that part of the barrel to the Terran players. Bunch of sand eaters. Disgusting. <laughs> oh. Raven and the armor missile being utilized. It's rare to see that. Arsten, do you think carriers would be cooler if they had four stronger microable interceptors instead? Maybe several types of interceptors even? No? I think carriers would be coolest if you could only build them in the campaign. But I have strong opinions on stuff. And it might scare some of you off. All right. Got a big run by coming in. This is going to do nothing, by the way. Eh. Or it shouldn't do much. Because there's no adrenal glands. These links are poorly upgraded. And taking out these tech labs is something already. Honestly, that's much better than I thought he was going to get. Response time out of uh, Gumio, also not great. Sends his entire army over rather than splitting a part off. So actually now exposing his tanks. Our observer isn't realizing, but uh, Solar luckily is. He's going to pick off a couple of tanks. That link round by did so much more. I thought that was dead on arrival, but it actually ends up getting quite a bit done. Not directly, but indirectly here. Taking out a, a couple of tanks, delaying that push out. Corruptor's now flying in. Gumiho decides to not teleport back. That's a pretty expensive mistake. PCs are really expensive. Hate to see it. He's moving forward with an unseaged army. And the armor missile is going to connect with his, with, uh, with all these Ravagers and links. And there's five bases out for Gumio. Gumio is the type of player, by the way, that doesn't necessarily like to go into Ghost. He's someone that sometimes just stays on pure mech. And I think one of the scariest things for Zerg players is fighting against someone that can play mech, but then also mixes in the Bionicles units. You know, the Bionicles. The Biologicals. The ghost. And it's that hybrid combination that is so rare to see. That's where the real power spike of Terran is. In the late games, like Ghost, Thor, Tank, Raven, Viking, Cyclone, Hellbat. As uh, these Brute Lords are morphing right in the face of danger. Uh, a couple of Thors are being produced right now. Those who mix in nukes are scary. That's a good point you raised there, my dear friend. It's a very solid point you, you raised there. Triple starports now being produced. And don't forget there's already at least one starport out. So that means we're going up to four starports. That is a good amount of starports, if you ask me. Along for quick transitions between uh, Vikings... Ravens, maybe mixing in battlecruisers or some liberators as well. Liberator, often a 
an underutilized portion of the uh, the Terran mech force. It's a good engagement once again here coming out of Solaris. It feels like Gumio is falling apart a little bit here. When the going gets tough, uh, Gumio starts to struggle. A couple of Thors now, though, are going to be uh, uh, sniping down these brutes. Very solid upgrades on them. Vikings moving in as well. Here comes a flank. Uh, tanks not really in position. Planetary way too far in the back as well. As the mill force is going to get taken out. Feels like Gumio is just slowly but surely bleeding out of stuff. Doesn't have the units. It's trying to add in Banshees now as a transition. Which is honestly the last air units that I would have expected. This Thor is uh, trying to shoot at these Ravagers while the Ravagers move back home. I feel like Solar is a little bit too afraid. I, I think he could have achieved more there. But he wants to... To restabilize. Oh, tanks perhaps too far forward, not being protected by anything back there. So Ravagers coming in with the Biles with their range attack will take out these tanks. So I'm actually losing a lot of supply in a couple of seconds. And Gumiho making a pure air transition at this point. Well, not pure air, but BC Banshee Thor is the composition he's going for. I've seen a lot of compositions that don't exist. And this is one of them. At least it's a composition that I haven't seen really before. It's like this type of... He also doesn't have any upgrades on his air weapons. Don't forget that. That's actually really important. Because both Banshees and NBCs, they, they benefit a lot. Vikings as well. Of course. Just really all your air units. They benefit a lot from the ship weapons. And we're not seeing that. Now these Banshees are being revealed as well. Which seems like a weird thing to reveal. Planetary seems somewhat safe as it's on a high ground. Here comes an attack out of Gumiho. Does he have enough tanks with this army? I think the answer to that is just a simple and fat no. Because he doesn't have any tanks with this army. It is just pure Thor. But is there enough anti-air? That's another question altogether. 3-3 three, three upgrades versus 2-2. Two, two. More BCs in production. What's the Corruptor count at? Oh, here come Vipers. Are going to get taken out practically instantly by these Thors. Here come Brutes, but they don't shoot up. Oh, no. And now he's realizing, like, wait a second. It wasn't just Banshee. There's also BCs. More BCs still on the way. This is going to be chased back. Ship weapons level 1 starts right now. There's four Corruptors on the way. This is such an unfortunate situation here for Solar. Oh, no. Solar is just getting blasted completely. Bison, I can't believe the air transition is making it happen. Just as a bunch of random BCs flying around. It's going to shoot Brute Lords down right now. Building more Banshees as well. I feel like shooting the Corruptors would have been even better here. Probably would have been capable of, uh, of continuing to go for a little while. The entire left side, by the way, is not being played with yet. That's just uh, it's the forbidden forest of this map currently. Maybe both players forgetting that it exists. That happens sometimes with new maps. Also with old maps. Zerg air too weak. Buff corruptors for the fifth time. Now we're thinking. Corruptors trying to move in. Thor count is high. Ship weapons level 1 finally about to finish up. Three more CCs as well finishing up. Income-wise, you know, it doesn't even look that good for Solar anymore either. It doesn't have that three o'clock base. He's in trouble here as well. He's trying to burst a couple of uh, piles on top of this army. That's not quite working out. As the uh, the battle cruiser Thor combination here, just busting Solar down. Look at him, man. The Mech King. He knows what he just did. He knows. He introduced me to a new composition, Battlecruiser Thor. And all I could say, how do you beat a composition with such fat units? I think the answer is simple, it's investors. Why were there no investors? No neural parasites, no fungals in combination with bile. You could have some serious impact here on the army.
Four GG was going Thor Banshee, and he was sniping every overseer. The problem with Banshee there is Rainer. Rainer, if that's even your real name. Um, the problem with that is that Banshees are weak against Parasitic Bomb. And as a result, you have to micro the Banshees, which the average mech player is not capable of doing. You completely circumvent this problem by going for battle cruisers, high HP. The, 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 what's it called? The cardiac arrest? Parasitic bomb isn't very powerful against it at all, Rainer. So, yeah, sometimes I don't even think you have a brain in there, in your noggins. Like it's all empty up there, like a hollow coconut. Except the coconut at least is delicious. God, it's unbelievable. So you're not even thinking, man. That's why no one calls you the thinking Zerk. All right, up next we have Hero Beyond. This is a banger. Why is that a banger? Because the pros versus Terran. Pros versus Terran's always bangers. Banger after banger. I think back in Wall, the friend of mine I played against. A lot said Battlecruiser Thor is Zirkling because base race. What? I don't entirely understand what you said, but I also agree with it. Hero is going to rip Beyond apart like yesterday. Is that a spoiler? Wait, did someone rate me on Twitch? Am I going to have to look at this right now? Oh, it's Roddy rating me. Thanks, Roddy. I appreciate that. Welcome from the uh, Rotterdam 08 stream. Welcome aboard. Hey, Harston, do you still believe on your conspiracy with the side Delta maps always being picked in multiplayer matches? Okay. The amount of times that when I ladder that I get the old maps over the new maps is insane. It is not okay. So even earlier, the game that we played, I played, we played, I played, you guys were merely watchers, viewers, voyeurs, sitting on the chair on the side. Um, look, it was on Golden Aura as well. It was on Golden Aura. Tell me that isn't a little bit suspicious. Tell me that isn't a little bit suspicious. The amount of times, and and I on most of my accounts, I have at least three maps vetoed of the old maps. It is very suspicious. And I've sent a letter to Blizzard and they haven't responded yet within the 24 hours I gave them to respond. And that's pretty much as good as an admission of guilt as you're going to get. That's at, as good of an admission as Guild as you're going to get. Oh, my God. Oh, it's room review time. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. It's soon going to be time to room review again. Look at this. We already have the preview right now. Oh, but this is going to be a banger. I can feel it. We even have a little bit of roof here out of Beyond. That is it's kind of naughty, if you ask me. It's like showing ankle in a picture. God, disgusting. He's really, uh, you know... He's enticing us all with this potential room preview. God, this is going to be good. Hero's in his 30s right now. That's what I've heard. I don't quite believe that either. I don't just believe everything that... Oh, 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 oh. Am I fast enough? I wasn't fast enough. Okay, we need to re-go. Don't worry, nothing ever happens in the first two minutes anyway. Oh wait, the music played. That was bad. Okay, here we go. So that's a painting of a cat. It's probably his cat. It's not a painting, it's like a blanket. That's probably his uh, girlfriend or wife. Then he has trophies on the left, a mirror behind him. That's so he can turn around in his swivel chair and give himself finger guns. 
And then on the right, what do we have here? We have a TV. Is that a TV? People that have... To, he has a TV on his microwave. So if he gets bored looking at the food in the microwave, he can look at the TV. Or is it a screen? See, this guy is StarCraft addicted. He's always watching streams. Take no time to... Waiting for the microwave. Cheeky little TV. Then here, this is his camping gear. In here. He goes camping in the weekend. He has slippers. Nice looking door, by the way. And this to control the temperature. Fantastic room. This is the most livable room that I've seen so far. And here comes Bjorn. I'm not sure if these are real curtains or if this is just painted on the walls. But it's a square room, it looks like. And it has a roof. So, 4 out of 10. It's not much to say about that room, guys. There wasn't much to say about the room. Okay, let's go into the future. Oop, and we skipped the first two minutes. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Oh, this map is good, by the way. This is Dynasty. It's one of the new maps. Most of you probably haven't seen it yet because Blizzard doesn't want you to see the new maps on the ladder. Um... Now, in this map, what are the features of this map? You have a gold base, which you can take as your natural. And you can build a Twilight Council on your main base, apparently. These are two features of the map. Oh, you can wall that off? I didn't know that. Single gate walls it. I tried that with a pylon and it didn't wall it. Or I mispositioned the pylon. It's also possible. These are really... Oh, the double Hellion. I actually think uh, he played this against me in practice. Then I lost seven workers. This is a classic uh, Beyond build. Look at him go. This is really difficult to deal with. Because if you're moving out, you're exposing your main base. What if there's more Hellions? You're not sure, right? So you're going to need to keep the Stalkers in your... In your mineral line, but then what if the Hellions run away? You know, it's also awkward. God, this is, I don't. I think this this map is really bad for Protoss, to be honest. I think this is a bad Protoss map. Yeah, I said I said what I said. This is a bad Protoss map because it's not even done yet. You know, Beyond can just go for like. Imagine you go for like a three Rex build and you hit behind here, freaking three Rex and and and, and tanks in there as well, and then you siege up or you get like a, a tank and a cyclone. This map feels very difficult in the pros or Terran matchup. You need to take the forward base as the pros. And it means that if the other guy takes the gold, you're going to be in a sucky position. And if there's one thing I don't like in life, it's being in a sucky position. It's cool to build a cannon there. No, it's not. No, 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 no. you can't build cannons. Cannons are bait, always. If you build a cannon in the first four minutes of a PvT, you might as well leave the game. There's really no point. There's really no point. Forge, 150 minerals. Cannon, 150. That could have been two gateways, all right? There's no way. Just uh, at high level. I, like, look, I'm, saying, I'm not saying that this is the case everywhere. But at high level, building a cannon in the first four minutes is a death sentence. Absolutely. Oh, this is a great plan, wasn't it, Hero? Walking some DTs across the map. The other guy has his natural walled in. What the hell was that? Did he think that his opponent was not gonna repair the depot? He should just wait it for the freaking prism. You see, it would have been a surprise. Now there's a ten. There's a freaking, uh, the freaking the turret on the way. <sighs> so he lost two DTs for free now. Or well, I mean, he had to use two scans on it. There goes the entire surprise. Another DT is popping in. There's blink available. Could have definitely utilized that. Now he's a couple of. Uh, oh no no! Oh my good lord! Uh, be on his game number one. Absolutely. This is as over as it gets. Like, uh, holy crap. Oh, it's gonna blink in here. That's nice. That's real nice, actually. But I think there's some scans available. Oh, there's a turret here as well. Freaking beyond the man of the turret. 
And you can still kill that technically. I think a scanner, you know, wouldn't be a waste of a scan in my mind. Be a pretty good investment. So now we're gonna get the tank marine marauder push out. We have a tank over here as well. There's quite a few units that are popping into this base. It's gonna be a, a an awkward little base trade here, which isn't really a base trade, but it also isn't not a base trade. You know what I mean? This can't really be anything. There's a lot of workers going down. I think some of that is in the main, where Beyond is now trying to pull SCVs into the tiniest little chokes. That went extremely well. That's why I think you should have scanned that. This base is being taken out, but not that many workers falling yet. Only six. There's an alternative base already here for Hero as well. Hero is making stuff work with, honestly, how little he has. That is fairly impressive. I'm giving him oh, no, three stars for this. One star for the early game and five stars for how he's doing it now. His movement is absolutely phenomenal. He's a magician when it comes to these units. But, uh, yeah, the early game wasn't so great. He's now going to try and attack. Also not as great, as he loses the prison pretty much for free. Uh, Beyond is still denying that gold base. I think it actually went down now. It's not me lagging, by the way. It's the, the, the live feed. I'm completely innocent when it comes to this. I'm not even an accessory here. I'm just I'm just sitting here. We could pause for a second so that it maybe plays more smoothly in a row. Pum pi dum pi dum. Poof. Yeah. That the core is in a little bit of trouble. I'd love if you could save these tanks, but I don't think it's actually going to be viable. Beyond's going to lose quite a few resources here. I'm just going to pick up one dude. What is in there? It's like three marines and uh, a hellion, or three marines and a marauder. I think quite see. I think it's a marauder three marine combination. One one has finished right now for Beyond. Two base versus. No, well, I guess it's three base versus three base soon. Beyond is not building any workers. He's already up eight workers. He's mining from a gold. I mean, he's in a really good spot right now. It seems unlikely that Beyond's going to end up losing this game. In my professional opinion. And a lot of that has to do with those early Hellions and the failed DT attack initially. The follow-up attack with the DT was very good. But the initial DT attack was a lot of things, but very good. Not one of them. Once this opens up, by the way, it's a serious uh, serious liability here for Hero as well. Or for uh, Beyond, my apologies. I'm just going to get a 4-drop into the... Uh, the old natural. So once again, a tiny little base trade. This time, though, be on much better spot to navigate that. Single T is going to get warped in here. This is not an orbital quite yet. It could be frustrating. It's going to need a single scan aggressively. At the same time, Zealot warping in the main base should get cleaned up. That's two Zealots that fell before the fight even started. Hold position on these SCVs. More hold position, please. No, it's not going to do it. It's just going to continue attacking here with those SCVs. And I think, my dear friends, that uh, Beyond here is holding relatively easily. There is one DT still slashing and swiping away. That's going to be it. GG gets called. And that means that Beyond wins game number one. You'd love to see it. And this is not a finger gun moment, if you ask me. So I'd be surprised to see... Hero utilize his swivel chair. You think he's eating something? Or you think he's just showing off his hair? God, my hair is good. That's all he's doing. What a gangster. Well, he's not a gangster, because then he wouldn't be making so much money. Hero's making loads of cash. Because he's one of the greatest players of the world. I wish I could get Reddit's balance perspective after each match. You probably could. Greatest Protoss player versus the weakest Terran? I, I'm never sure if this type of stuff is just joking or... Beyond currently... On a legal lock, which I rate very highly as a way to rate players, is rank 8. With a versus Protoss rating of 3167. Hero has a versus Terran rating of 3406. Like, it is not out of this world surprise that Beyond is going to take a map off of Hero. Also, their current MMR is very similar on the ladder. Which is another metric that I look to a lot. 
A legal lock rating is good for tournament performance, especially if it's a lot of recent performance, and otherwise MMR on the ladder, especially from active accounts is important. Hero's MMR on the ladder currently is, I think it's like 6.5k 6, 6 or so. 6.590 is what Hero has. Not super active. Usually players who play more get a lower MMR. And Beyond currently has an MMR of 6.537. So, very close in MMR, very close in Aliga Lug rating, and I think Beyond is one of the best Terrans right now. I think Maru is probably better. You could say maybe Cure is better, but Cure is lower on Aliga Lug. Clem is probably better than Beyond in the TVP matchup. But I don't think it's unheard of for a top 4 player to take out a top 1 player. And I actually think that Max Pax has better PVT than Hero does. But I could be wrong on that. I'd have to ask Terran players that play against them both. Harstam, do you agree that the Ghost is too good at solving every prob problem Terran has and needs to be looked at? Yeah, I think the Ghost is too powerful. But the Ghost is also necessary for Terran right now. Because without, the, if, you, if you nerf the Ghost too hard, then... Life's gonna suck. Look at this. It's freaking crazy, I tell you. This Reaper pad is actually crazy. Hero's gonna block it there with a single pylon. Looks cool. Looks tight. Looks nice. Double gas opener. Ooh, I wonder if Hero's gonna keep this probe in his opponent's main base. Kind of as a way to bait the Reaper to get there. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Because that barracks was far away. It's gonna delay the reactor by quite a bit as well, which is cool too. Yes, I like this. Uh, that particular move, I give four stars. At Harston, do you have any Terran friends? Yeah, of course. What? Clem and I are close. Uh, uh, yeah, I like Beyond. I get along with Special. Spirit. Yeah, it's loaded. I get along with the Hero Marine I get along with. I get along with Max Pax's Off Race as well. He overraises as Terran quite a bit. So I think he's technically a Terran at this point. Is he reading the YouTube chat? I read everything. I'm a... I'm a quick reader. I read loads. Uthermal not mentioned. Confirmed beef. Uthermal's a random player now. Not a Terran anymore. I guess Max Pax also is in a full time Terran, but we count them anyway. What's Max Pax's Terran MMR? 6 2. <laughs> That's pretty good. Alright, what do we have over here? Let's have a look. We have an observer on the way. It's like a 2 gate, 3 gate robo ish type of play. Very rare to see this. Very rare. Wow, and an immortal. This isn't rare. This is this thing is still alive, man. The situation where a steak could still be a cow eating grass. That's how freaking rare this is. It's raw. This build. What the hell? He's going for an. Immortal plus Prism, you never see this build. He's gonna hide the Immortal as well, which is a move I appreciate. He's gonna pull the workers, that's a move I don't appreciate, oh my good lord. Almost lost stuff there. Still two mines remaining in this thing, a, a full pool away already, plus a kill on a Zealot. That's a pretty decent trade, let's see what's gonna kick off next. He's gonna show the Immortal and not get the kill. Nice retargeting coming out of Beyond. He's gonna head back into the main base for the third mine drop, and I think Hero doesn't believe in it anymore. Oh my good lord! These are some interesting retargets. I hear he should have retargeted, but didn't. And now I think Hero is... I, Hero is super all-in. And there's a tank, there's a Liberator. The, there's still a mine alive. This is an all-in. Like, this is what all-ins look like, okay? But what is the plan here? No, you need to mine the minerals! Oh wait, he's gonna elevate her twice? Dude, this is the slowest attack I've seen in my life. 
it's, uh, by the time he hits, Hero's gonna have a second son. Oh, sorry, Bjorn's gonna have a second son. Like, holy crap, this is late. There's gonna be like four tanks out and a Viking. You just pull the boys here for a second, and you're fine. The Viking in the air is doing a lot of good. It's working. Hello, where's the rest of the units? Surely downstairs. Oh my god, if this works. Was this it? Where's the Liberator? Uh, Beyond just kept units in the bunker. Beyond didn't believe this was the real attack. He's like, this is so little units. At such a late timing. I'm gonna keep my units in the bunker. Because I don't believe you. And honestly, I agree with him. This felt like the most unbelievable attack I've seen in my life. And it didn't work. Hey, he killed two tanks. Still a Viking, or a new Viking pops out. That's actually very big, because I think that's gonna get a kill. Yeah, nice. Pushes this back. Big damage coming out of Yan. Once Stim finishes. Mm, once Combat Shield finishes. M plus one. We have the triple threat here. And a faster third CC as well. What is this barracks count at? Are we at two or at three? This is a really important uh, question actually. That I want answered right now. If you can't get me an answer right now, you're fired. Ooh, I think he's on two. Because that feels like a third barracks there being added. That means that maybe Beyond ha or sorry, that Hero has a little bit of breeding room. He's going to throw down the Templar Archives as well. I mean, you just you can't can't fight there. Absolutely no. Third CC or third Nexus on the way. We have two more barracks coming in. Surely that got scouted, right? It didn't. Surely it didn't. I mean, there's no blink. We're gonna have charge. Charge is great. Okay, quickly, tell me a number. How many kills is this marine drop gonna get? I'm saying four. Five. I'm saying five. I'm saying five. Quickly, give me a number. No, don't lose all. Jesus Christ. Okay, three so far. Six. I guess that's the Liberator. Or was it all works in the gas? It's gonna get a pickup. This still counts. It's gonna go back in. Ooh. Almost got Kerrigan behind. Six kills. Nah, no, not bad. That's it. This is where the count stopped. We stopped the count. Absolutely stopped the count. I was pretty close. I'm okay saying five and then it being six. Did you guys know, by the way, that 6 is the first perfect number? Because 6 is equal to the sum of its dividers. St. Augustine once said... Six is not a perfect number, because God created the world in six days. But God created the world in six days, because six is a perfect number. And six is also the number of workers that got killed here. Fifty-seven workers to fifty-six. Bian is very far ahead. It'd be difficult for him to lose this game. And I don't think he wants to try either. So if I'm... If I'm Beyond's advisor here, and I'm allowed to tell him what to do, I tell him to continue winning. Maybe push with some Ghost. 1-1 one, one timing, combat shield finishes. Keep pressure with two medivacs on the left. You could even say pull the boys. I wouldn't personally do that. But you probably could do it and win. Because this game is extremely over. Hero has no upgrades, except for Storm, but it's not like an attack or an armor upgrade. This is pain. Oh, here come the five marines back in. Oh, these guys are going to get some damage, aren't they? 
Oh, these five marines are gonna get some damage. Oh, oh, oh. He's gonna get six for a second time. Oh, he's gonna get eight. Never mind. Dude, if he would have sniped the prison with those marines, they should have all gotten the Medal of Honor. Did you know that is actually the name of a medal you can get? The Medal of Honor? I thought it was just the name of a game series for a very long time. But it's not. It's actually a legit medal you can get if you're in the army. Um... I was just surprised by that. I'd never I probably should have known, but I never thought of that. Um two one upgrades coming up for hero. Oh, so he had plus one already. I must have missed that. My bad. Second Robo and Robo Bay coming in as well. You have an armory. I mean, the longer Beyond does nothing, the worse it's gonna be for him. Like, the faster he attacks, the better it's gonna be for him. And Beyond realized that as well, he's gonna go in. To medal after the game. <laughs> I know that's not true, but I like the thought. Oh. It felt like that Templar in front wanted to do something, but then he had no energy. This is sometimes when you slept very poorly and you worked out and you have to open a pickle jar and you know it's not gonna open and you start and then it just doesn't work. That's kind of what that Templar looked like. Like, I was trying to open a pickle jar, but he had no power in his arm. <laughs> Anymore. That could have been... I guess that was bad. Losing a Templar to a mine. I think that one had some energy as well, which double sucked. I really believe that Beyond is taking a sweet time here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I got a quick drop in. Yeah, Beyond is just taking a sweet, sweet time. I, I feel like too much time, almost. Because really, this is an unlosable city. Oh my good lord, that was a nice snipe. Oh, oh my god. Jesus Christ. Hero is just getting run around here for days straight. If be honest, be honest, not just winning here. He's destroying him. He's telling Hero that he is the best. When it matters. In the stars war qualifier. First round. And it also settles the debate for today, my dear friends. Which race is the best? Today's amount of maps won by Terran is... Terran won six. And Protoss won two maps. Now sure, two of the maps that Terran won were in the TVZ matchup. So should we count that? Maybe not, but I will. 2-6 map score. That's pretty bad for Protoss, if you ask me. Jesus. And also, Classic is just supposed to beat Cure because he has more letters in his name. So yeah, make it out what you will. Sounds pretty broken to me. In conclusion, the patch was pointless. Terran is still too strong. Unbelievable. Protoss needs to be buffed again. Hero played bad? Yeah, it was just that's, I think it's easy to say. I don't think Hero played bad. I think he played well, but made mistakes. And sometimes when your opponent is as good as Beyond, it looks like you're playing bad. But if Hero were to play against one of you guys in the chat, he would absolutely destroy you. And it wouldn't be close. And he would be playing at the same level again. All right. That's it, I guess, no? I mean, that's, that's the end of the day for me. Let's see if I missed anything. Oh. Good lord. Most follow notifications. No, I missed nothing. Life is good for me. Um. Th that's it, I think, for today. I'm gonna I'm gonna eat then hang out. I have to uh, disassemble a couch today. I hate disassembling stuff. I hate assembling stuff. Is disassembling even a word? I feel like it might be. Disassembling. Well, yeah, of course it is. Disassemble. Take something to pieces. <sighs> Take apart into its constituent pieces. All right. 
So that's what I'm going to be doing. Thanks all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I'll see all of you next time. What are you eating? I'm not sure yet. I got some new eggs this morning because I ran out. So I'm thinking of maybe eggs. I'm a, a big supporter of the egg movement. Big chicken, as they call it. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. All right. Thanks for watching. And let's see if we can raid someone on Twitch as well for once in our miserable lives. Someone's still streaming. Loco. Lambo SE2 is streaming. Look at that. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not done with StarCraft yet today, be sure to go over to twitch.tv slash Lambo King. He's the second best streamer just behind me. Ever so closely behind me. All right, I'll see you all uh, tomorrow. No, I'm not here tomorrow. I'm playing a tournament tomorrow. I'll see you all on uh, another day. Monday, maybe. Ciao, ciao.